principles one to three, the business must be conducted ethically. So what do, what do the board members have to do? And so we know members here would be the directors. Because guys, you will be auditing a company. And so you will be dealing with directors. Directors must act in good faith in the best interest of the organization. Avoid conflicts of interest. Act with due care, skill, and diligence. Where have I seen all of this? This comes directly out of the Companies Act, Section 76. So King has now gone and said, let's align what the board or members should do with what the Companies Act says its directors should do. So directors conduct, act in good faith in the best interest of the organization, avoid conflicts of interest, act with due care, skill and diligence, and have the knowledge they need to, which again is also included in Companies Act. Other than that, they must set the tone for an ethical culture. And we saw this ages ago with internal control. A company has to have internal control, and one of the five factors of internal control was to have a strong control environment. Okay, strong control environment means you're creating that ethical culture. And one of the ways in which you could get that ethical culture across to everyone was to establish codes of conduct so that each employee understands what their role and responsibility is in ensuring this ethical culture. So now I'm linking Internal Control, Companies Act and King together because King is all about good corporate governance. Having a strong internal control structure would be corporate governance. So I can see the, the merge between all my different topics and I can now start to refer to a specific act that covers the requirements instead of just knowing what internal control should be. Okay, so the board should approve and publish codes of conduct, but delegate implementation to management. But they are responsible for the codes of conduct, so if management are not implementing it, they will be held accountable for that. Okay, and the board's responsibility is to assume the responsibility for corporate citizenship and something that they can do there is to make sure that the company complies with the South African Constitution. Okay, because that would then show how this citizen, which is a business, is adhering to the rules of the country. Those are the recommended practices to achieve the principles that business must be conducted ethically. So how would this be tested? Same as with Companies Act, we'd have a scenario where we could see that the directors are not acting in good faith, in the best interest, that the culture within the entity isn't one of let's act ethically, let's comply with laws and regulations. And then you would need to be able to pick that up and then say, this is non-compliance with the King Code because they are not acting in good faith in the best interest with due care. There isn't an ethical tone that has been set for this business. There's no codes of conduct. Okay, so it would be in the scenario not very clear for you to know I must link this to King, but your required would say discuss the concerns with compliance with King or Companies Act. And then you could put this for both King and Companies Act. Okay, and you'll see all of those when you look at principles one to three. So let's go to the code and we can actually just see where these principles come from. So we're in part five. And first principle, governing body should lead ethically. Remember, this is a level three. The other two are only level twos. So our focus should be here. And then you'll see members of the governing body have to make sure that they act in good faith, in the best interest, avoid conflict, set the tone, act ethically. Nice and simple. 
They must have sufficient working knowledge. That's also in the Companies Act. Act with due care in the Companies Act. Okay, and something new here, continuously develop their competence. Okay, because there's going to be changes continuously. So we can't say they've got sufficient knowledge if they aren't keeping up to date with the changes. Okay, they have to assume the responsibility for setting direction of the organization. And then management will implement that. And one thing that's changed here, guys, in the previous king, they said that the board of directors had to meet at least quarterly. Now they've just said members must have sufficient time to prepare and attend meetings. They haven't given a set number of meetings requirements. Okay, then, principle two, the board must assume responsibility for governing ethics. We've already said that. And they must approve those codes and policies. But management will be delegated to implement them. Okay, and that's where you can see down here. Management delegated. And they must continuously have oversight of this ethics. And for good corporate citizenship, the board is responsible to make sure that the company is a corporate citizen and that they can comply with the Constitution of South Africa and any standards or law. Okay, so that's your principles one, two, three. You can just note here there is specific disclosure for ethics for corporate citizenship and guys, this disclosure is going to start to sound so repetitive for you. There's everything that there needs to be disclosure of their duties they need to give an overview, the key focus areas, the measures, and the future focus. Okay, so let's attempt a class example. I'm going to give you guys five minutes to do this. <laughs> 